people are sort of surprised. Oh, wh what made you want to do that? That's, that's like the OG question. What made you want to fight? And then you've opened up that can of worms. This is sports. It's not fighting. It's not whatever you're trying to make it out to be. I am an athlete. I do this for a living. While you guys are sitting at your desk, I get to, you know, get paid to do the blood sport. I was born in Christchurch, New Zealand. My mum and my dad had not the most secure relationship. Every now and again, he'd sort of like dip off. It was 100% her raising me. Mum and I have a quite close relationship. At the age of 10, I ended up moving to Australia. My mum knew that there was going to be better opportunities. We came over here with like two suitcases and a guitar. Why the guitar? I don't know. My mum gave me everything I needed and, and more, and, and I can't imagine how hard it would have been. We moved down to the Gold Coast and she cleaned cars, you know, like the car washes in the car park. I remember she got our first car over here for like 500, 600 bucks or something. It was like a little shit box. I couldn't imagine how hard it would have been for my mum to do it by herself. Just under a year after we'd moved over to Australia, found out my, my dad passed away. I was 10. It's not my responsibility to um, make a relationship with my father. I'm not the adult. But knowing that I would never be able to rekindle that relationship, it was a hard pill to swallow, and then all the stuff that he missed out on. I'm like the only Māori person on my entire mom's side of the family. Being the first Polynesian person in a room full of Anglo-Saxons was, was a big identity crisis for me, I think. I've like, you know, tried to like learn and seek out my papa, especially because my dad had passed. And so obviously like that being my lineage to Māori, I'm trying to like fill in some missing gap for myself and for my own understanding, for my own identity and for my own journey of self-healing and just being Māori in, a, in my own way. I started MMA about the age of 15. I did karate before that, then transitioned to MMA, competing as an amateur and then changed to a pro when I was 20. Once I did graduate from high school, then I started competing and training full-time. It's, it's basically raised me, it's given me community, it, it's given me strong friendships and just some sort of direction and, and purpose. Me mauda wa ki toi o te whakaaro o tauiwi, ara me whai whainga. Ka mutu, me whai pūte o hohonu, kia wātea, me whai hoki i etahi tōmina, hei aronga māu. Manohi anō, me whai hoki i ngā kura, a ngā iwi taketake, ara ko ngā pū manawatanga. Ko te whakaute, mana, manawau, manawatina. Te whakatuatahi i etahi atu i mua i ākoi, te āwhina i etahi atu. Mā ko nā rawa, ka hua kaua ko tētahi toa noiho, engari, he toa rangatira kē. I don't want to work a nine till five. I know I'm not made for that lifestyle. And so therefore, if I want to do this and I want to do what I love for the rest of my life, then you just got to make the sacrifices. As a pro, it's not like I had heaps of money to begin with. I was working a full-time job. You cut corners when you need to and work more if you need to. Don't go out with your friends every weekend. Don't eat out every weekend. Do you? Sometimes I've had to pawn off necklaces in the streets of Parramatta, but you know, like you make it work. You just literally make it work. Kāre he wāhi kotahi o tētahi kai pakanga, kāre e horomia e tēnei hākinakina. Me moi i te wātika, me ara te hinengaru, me pakari te tinana, me tau hoki te wairua. 
me tani farawato aro ki tō wā taka whāinga. I nā hoki, ko mahinga katoa me taunaki ki tō whāinga mātuatua. Kia mau ki te whakāro, kei a koe anahe te whakatau ka pēhea rā koe. On top of that, you're dieting and sort of eating at the right times. And sometimes you wake up and you're just going through the motions and you're like, what day is it today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday means pads in the morning or whatever. I go to my session that I'm going to get absolutely annihilated in. And I'm just going to get the shit in out of me and it's going to be horrible. And I'm going to feel like crap and uh, like, you know, I might cry, I don't know. <laughs> and then you look over and there's just these ladies doing their fitness classes and they're driving their Porsches. At those times, it really feels like, man, like, what are we doing this for? Like, we could be at home right now enjoying our family and our friends, but we're out here hu hustling. I literally want to go over to my friend's house and have dinner with her, but I can't because it's not within my calorie <laughs> intake. Te āwhiro kia puta te ihu, te hihiri kia eke panuku, te hōkaka kia toko ko tō pito mata. Koi nei ngā kura nui hei tūhera i ngā tatau ki te whatu o tō mana āhua ake. Ko ō whakatau katoa me whai pānga ki te hua nui o tō hākina kina. Me whai pānga ki a koe anō me te mōhia wa nō hoki ke te mana wa toka tō aro ki tō koke atu at the same time, I look at the fact that I get flown to Hawaii, I get put up in a nice place, I get paid to fight someone and do what I love. The highs and the lows create this crazy addiction where you're just like, you're chasing, you're chasing that next high. Hello. Hi. I just want to know if you could come on down as soon as possible, just to give you a rundown. Okay, yeah, no problem. Back in the mix. How's that Pepsi going? So this weekend, we're helping out the IMF of South Pacific Championship. Great for a lot of the amateurs coming through. They get the opportunity to compete over two days, um, qualifiers and finals, and I'll be helping out commentating in bits and pieces. The big man, back on the mic. Ngā heke ngā tōtā katoa, ko whakahia tōtia ki te tūnga kotahi. He āheinga e hua ai he tirohanga hō. He āheinga e kite ai ngā ngoi koretanga e auahatia ai he huarahi mō te hunga e takahi atu ana i o tapu ai. MMA hasn't been around for that long and so therefore us guys that are doing it now, we really are creating the pathway. One day after um, some boxing sparring rounds, I had like a little black sort of mark um, that wasn't kind of going away. It was sort of like a bug on the windscreen kind of thing. And so I knew that was definitely important to get checked. I booked with the ophthalmologist. I mean, he was basically on the spot, like, you need to go get surgery, like, today or tomorrow. And definitely hadn't um, considered eye injuries as a possible deterrent to stop me from fighting. Maybe it goes well, maybe it doesn't go well, maybe you get your eyesight back, maybe you don't. The one thing I did hold on to was that I'm always going to fight. I've sacrificed way too much for this to have this be the thing that's going to stop me. I'm super proud of where I've, what I've done in 27 years. If I can do it, anyone can do it, and, and I'm doing this for everyone that's coming behind me. Fighting is the easiest replica of life, you know, like going through the peaks and valleys in a five minute round. Life goes up and down and you're in good positions and now you're in bad positions and you can turn either or around in a split second. So don't get too, you know, caught up in either. Martial arts is probably one of the most purest versions of self-expression that you can kind of have. And therefore, like, you can create your own identity I'm a warrior, I'm a wahene toa. That is part of my identity. But then on top of that, you know, I am also a person. I am, you know, I am Janae.